Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is brought to you by RV Deep Clean. Over 40 ways to clean and downsize your Revit model all in one place. Get your free copy today by using the link in this video description. Have you ever wanted to remove all the constraints in your Revit model? Many times we wanted to do that because the constraints, if not set up correctly, can prevent you from doing even the most simple things in your model. For example, I have here a constraint that is put on this dimension here. And that means when I try to move this wall, maybe even this way slightly, it tries to move also the facade, which is a very bad idea. Let's cancel this. Or with this desk here, when I try to move it away from the wall behind it, it doesn't let me. It just slides along this wall like this in a very weird manner, all because of the constraints from the wall face to the face of the desk itself. This is not a big problem if I know exactly which constraint to unlock, like in this case, I can just click on this. But for example, if I move this wall now, it moves not just the desk, but also the doors up there, which may or may not be what you want. So would it be nice if we have a way to remove all the constraints in the model in one place? Well, the good news is that solution is here. When I open Dynamo and open this script here that we will build together today, I can just run it. And all 44 constraints in this model have been deleted for me in one single second. If I now go back to Revit now, I can fully move this wall like this without affecting the facade. And the desk here, freely I can move it away from the wall. I can also move the wall so the doors won't follow it anymore. So everything works. If you want to try this script yourself right now, just go down to this video description and download it using a link there. Otherwise, if you have free time, let me show you now step by step how to do this again from scratch. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. Of course, the first thing is to open Dynamo and launch it from there. We can now make a new script from new. And just like with my other tutorials, we will now set up the Python nodes. Let's do Python script from string. Now it's a usual thing I normally do in my tutorials. Let's make now a way for Dynamo to read a text file that contains a Python script. We can then use a text from that file as a script input for this node here. And then it will just run the Python script that we have in the text file. And then a file path node. That will be followed by file from path. And then of course we will do read file. Connect to there and connect that to here. So same old, same old. Of course I want to align them nicely so we can do this. Very nice. Let's save the script too by doing file save as and we can call this one. Remove all constraints. There we go. Next step, let's open up Visual Studio Code, my favorite Python script editor for Dynamo. If you are new to this kind of workflow, don't worry. Just go down to this video description and use a link there to see my basic video tutorial on how to script things in Dynamo this way. It will also show you how to set up and use Visual Studio Code because this is really the best editor you can have for writing Python script to use later in Dynamo. The video will also show you step by step how to create and understand and use this Python script template that I have opened already. So that should give you all the information you need to then come back to this video and follow me from here. All right, let's start some scripting here. The fastest way to collect all the constraints in the model is by using a filtered element collector. So let's say constraints equal to filtered element collector. Acting this on the document in the background there, DOC. And now we can do of category. And here we need to supply the category of constraints. Now the real question is, how do we know what this category is? Let's find out, let's return to the model. And look at the constraint here. I will start with this dimension. 
Now, just by looking at this, you can see that's the dimension there, and it's not really constraint we want to remove because the dimension is on this side and the constraint that's a weird padlock next to it. So how can I see the category of this constraint item? Well, this is where you need to have access to one of the developer tools, which is called Revit Lookup. If I go to Add-ins now, you can see I have it here installed already. If you haven't got it, just go down to this video description and use the link there to download the plugin and you can then install it yourself. Make sure to restart Revit so the plugin works normally. And once you've done that, you will see under Add-ins, there should be Revit Lookup. With this dimension selected there, I can go to Lookup and choose to snoop the current selection. And now, as you can see, it's a nice way to see all of the hidden properties and attributes of a particular Revit item. In this case, we have a dimension item there. You can even see the type name of it and the element's ID next to the name. You can then go through all of its properties here, including even the parameters listed in one place, and try to see what's relevant to finding out the constraints attached to the dimension. Now, just from experience, I know where to go, which is get dependent elements. Let's try this. As you can see, there's a list here of things that strongly depends on this dimension. So I was hoping the constraints would be one of those dependent items, but looks like it's not because here I see the same item that I have up there, nothing in extra. So let's look at something else. How about we try this wall here? Again, let's go for Add-ins, Noob Current Collection. And we also do here, get the dependent elements in the list. Now we're getting somewhere that are more here to look at. Let's expand dimension now. And you can see there are several dimensions attached to this wall. That's expected, but let's go through them. For example, this one, the category is dimension, that's fine. And I can just keep going down like this, checking them one by one. And here we have something different. Here, for this linear dimension style, the category is not dimension, it's constraints. And this seems to be the category we need. So let me click on this, right click, and just copy just for now. If I keep going down a few further lines, you can see there are other constraints to this wall as well, not just one. The good news is by doing this script, we can remove all of them in one go. Now we can close this out. For the desk, let's see if we can do the same thing here. Select the desk, go to Add-ins, Lookup, Current Selection. And once again, let's look at Dependent Elements. Yeah, that's promising. If I expand this, we have one alignment here. And also, the category is the same, which is Constraints, same name there. If you remember the constraint to the wall, the name here of the constraints were something like linear dimension style. With this one, it's called alignment, but the category is the same. That's good because that means I can use a single category to collect all types of constraints in the model. So now we have the information we need. Let's go back to Python. And here I can start supplying the built in category. Followed by the category name that I copied previously, which is always the underscore constraints. So with that, I should get all the constraints in the model. Let's test it out. Let's paste this to the out variable. Save the script. Go back here to Dynamo. And browse to the script file. So here I am in the same folder with the Python file. Let's select it. Open it now. And run this. Okay, let's see what's coming out from here. There are 44 constraints in the model, and that's a lot to delete manually. So I'm very glad we are building this script. If I now go back to Python, we can see how to remove them. Removing something means modifying the model, and that requires a transaction. So let's do a transaction here. Let's do with transaction taking place on this document with the name of remove all constraints, yeah, str, so storing that in a tr variable. We can then start the transaction by calling start on this variable there, and then do document.delete, and then pass in the constraints list up there. And finally, we do tr.commit to save the changes back to the model. Let's save this, go here, test it out. 
Of course, there's an error because I want you to see this. It says that on line 44, we have something wrong there. Let's go back to 44, and it's this line here. Now, sometimes the Python interpreter can be a bit confusing over which line is actually where the error occurs. So here, the error actually is on line 43. So make sure you keep that in mind too when you look at the error message in Dynamo. Sometimes you need to go up one line. Now this error, I know what it is because we are passing this to the delete method, a list of items, whereas it actually requires a list of element IDs. So very simple to fix. Let's do two element IDs here. Okay. And because we've done that, let's rename this parameter to constraint IDs. Just to keep things clear. And now we can save this. Go here. Click run one more time. Still an error. Let's see. Hmm, looks like it doesn't like the way we specify the list of IDs. So let's do it the old fashioned way. Let's do IDs to delete as the new variable, which is the list of element IDs. Make sure we use the square bracket here, not the curly one. Make sure that's the right pair and then the normal brackets following it. Once we have the list of constraints IDs here, we need to append those IDs to the IDs to the lead list. Let's do a list comprehension here, which is ID to the lead dot add ID for ID in constraints ID. Like so. And now instead of constraints ID, we need to fit to delete the list of IDs to delete. And just in case the last line is a problem, let's put this list here as well and save the script. Go back to here, run this again. Okay, so that seems to have worked. Let's see, it should have deleted all of those 44 constraints from the model. We can verify that by going back to the Revit file here. Check the undo stack. There's a remove for constraints transaction there, the one we just created and run. How about the constraints? If I click on this dimension here now, this padlock is now open. That means it's working. I can try to move this wall now and it shouldn't move the curtain wall below. Yep, it's not. There's a warning, but that's to do with this other wall next to it, not the wall on the opposite side. So even if I choose unjoin, this one didn't move, this one did. And doing this, let's go and check the desk too. The desk, if I try to move it away from the wall, I can freely do so. No longer a problem with constraints. Even these two doors up there, if I now move the wall like this, the doors no longer follow it, which is great, as long as that's what you want. Okay, so the script here works. The next step is we want to make the Dynamo script self-contained. We shouldn't have to rely on an external text file here to make it work. So let me go here and do Control A. Control C to copy everything there. Go back to Dynamo. Drop in here a proper Python script node, not the one from string, but the proper one up here. We can now double click it to open. Do Control A, Control V to paste everything in here now. And usually it's okay to use Python 3 if you are on more recent Revit versions, but I normally, uh, just for safety, change it back to Python 2. So if my colleagues are on Revit 2018, 2019, they sometimes can still use my script without having to upgrade the model first, which is a messy business on its own. Now we have this on Python 2. Let's save this, close it down, delete all the other nodes up there. We don't need that anymore. And just for user friendliness, let's do in here a watch node and double click to rename it to deleted constraint IDs. This is gonna make it clear what elements were deleted from using Python there. Right click, align on top. And now if I go back here to undo the thing, remove all constraints, let's undo to this point. So we have the constraints back here. I can now save the script there and run it again. So it has deleted again those 44 IDs exactly like before, but now it no longer relies on this external text file. Anyway, if your goal with doing this is to reduce the model file size, then that may not be enough because there are so many more things you should do to make the model light and fast. 
to do those things, it's recommended that you use some of the other plugins, such as under here I have RV Deep Lane. Let's try that. It's a free plugin, by the way. Check out this video description and use the link there to get your free copy today. In here, I can see that there are so many ways to clean up the model. For example, you can purge and use scope boxes, and use rooms, areas, or spaces. Even the boundary lines of those objects, you can purge them too if they are not in use. Also, you can purge and use design options or explode groups created by arrays. For duplicating elements in the same place, you can delete them here in one click if you know the rule that you want to use. Or you can delete the constraints from the model, which is actually exactly what we have done here in Dynamo. But now it's part of the full menu of things you can do to clean the model. You can also, of course, purge and use parameters. If I go now to views, I can also clean up 2D elements hidden in views and not visible anywhere else. Or I can try to clean up here all the temporary views based on their names. Or even better, clean up often tags, often dimensions, unused life styles, like patterns, few patterns, all in one place here. On the right, I can choose to delete views not on sheets or sheets that don't have any view. Unused view templates, unused view filters, I can remove them as well. Under the next tab called links, I can also remove cut imports, cut links, or detect cut imports in all of the loaded families. Very convenient there. The idea is you have all the available methods for cleaning up a Revit file in one single place. You can pick your selection from here. For now, I will just go with my selection now and click on clean model to run the entire routine. All right, the process is now complete. It has given me at the end this nice little report to see exactly what was deleted from the model. So if I now expand this, I can see some of the unused area boundaries and room boundaries are now gone. All the unused few pattern elements too, they are cleaned up now. All the line patterns elements not in use, also gone. There were a floor overlapping another floor because I chose to remove one of them. This floor is now cleaned up for me too. And going down further, I can see many views that are on sheets are now gone, as you can also tell from the project browser on the left there. So overall, very quickly, we can clean the model like this using different ways we want to execute the task. And also you can export the report to CSV or Excel for further checking if you need to. If you like what you see here, make sure to go down to this video description and use the link there to try RV DeepLint today completely for free. Otherwise, if you just want to delete all the constraints from the model today, either use the script we built together now to do the task or download the script directly from another link in this video description. If you like this lesson and want more like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.